In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called word break. So given a non-empty string S and a dictionary um, containing a list of non-empty words, determine if string S can be segmented into a space-separated sequence of one or more dictionary words. So in this case, the same word in a dictionary might reuse multiple times in a segmentation. You might assume that dictionary doesn't, uh, does not contain duplicate words. So here you can see we have a string, right? In this case, this is lead code. The dictionary, you can see we have lead and code. And then here you can see it's true because we can basically uh, split a, because we can segment lead code to lead code, which all contains in the dictionary, right? In this case, lead contains in dictionary, code is also contained in, dic in the dictionary. If we have E like this, and we have a space here, and then we have T, C, O, D, that's not going to work because this does not contain a dictionary, and this does not con contain a dictionary, right? We want to segment the string so that all the, all the, um, all the words in the string um, contains in, this, uh, in the word, uh, in the dictionary, in this case, right? So here you can see we have another string, and then we have a word dictionary. We have apple and pen. In this case, we will return true because we can be able to reuse apple, right? We, in this case here, you can see we can be able to reuse multiple times in the segmentation. So here you can see we can have apple, pen, apple. So in this case, we can split apple, pen, apple in this case, right? So, so in this case, we're going to return true. And here you can see we have another string, in this case, cats and a dog or whatever but basically here you can see we have a dictionary which has cats dog sand and cat in this case it won't work because sand in this case um sorry yeah and in this case um contains that in, in the dictionary cats also contain the dictionary but og does not contain the dictionary so we're just going to return false okay so how can we solve this problem so to solve this problem the naive solution or the brute force approach will be to check each and every single element in the string and have a pointer. And for each pointer, um, for the current pointer that the um, that is pointing to, we're going to have a left substring and the right substring. And then for the left substring, we're going to check to see if this left substring is contained inside the dictionary. And for the right substring, we're going to see if it is a valid uh, word uh, word break. Right, so in this case, we're starting at index one. Uh, we're basically splitting. You can see we're splitting a, a um, we have a left substring, left substring, which is L, and the right substring, which is E, E, T, C, O, D, E. And then we want to see if it's a valid, um, valid word break on the right substring. In this case, the, the right side and the, and the left side both returns false. And you can see there's an OR operator. The reason why is that if one of those statements is true, we can just return true for this entire condition, for this entire method. So in, in this case, we have, we keep iterating. We, we now at the index two, in this case, we split, we see lead in this case, li and e, t, c, o, d, e, right? We see if those are the, if those two conditions are true, in this case, we don't. We continue until we have this point where, where we have lead, right, and code. In, I think is in zero, one, two, three, four, in this case, index four, right? So what we're gonna do then is we're going to, now we know this condition is true, right? We know that lead is inside the dictionary and we pass in the code, which is the right substring. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to see if code, we do the same procedure. We're starting at the um, at index one, right? We split, we have a left substring, which is C, we have a right substring, which is ODE. And what we're going to do is we're going to continue to do this until we get to here, right? In this case, because those statements are false, those conditions are false. What we're going to do is we're going to um, pass in code. And now the right substring is empty. If right substring is empty, or if any string we pass into WB is empty, we can just return true. Because we want to, re because we want to see if the left substring is actually contained in the dictionary, right? We want to see if the left substring is contained in the dictionary. That's why we have, we want to make sure that this 
condition is, is true. If this is true and this is true, then this is true, right? This whole uh, method will, will return true. So you will notice that if we were to really do this, the time complexity will be big O of 2 to the power of n, which means it's an exponential. So if we, because in this case, you can see that this right here computed twice. Um, not, not this one, sorry, my bad. Um, WBODE is computed twice here. If, and you can see DE also computed twice. E also computed twice, right? Not only those, for each of those methods that we call it recursively, we will have repeated computation. So what we can do is that is we can use a, um, a, mem um, a hash map or a table to memoize the data. The, 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 um, the computer solution, right? So in that way, what we can do is we can save the, the, the computer result onto this hash map, and then we can retrieve the data in, a, in, um, in constant time, right? So in this case, what's gonna happen is if we were to really implement mem uh, uh, dynamic programming using, sorry, this, this problem using a memoization, what we're going to do is we're going to bring the time complexity down to big O of um, n to the power of 3. The reason why it's n to the power of 3 instead of n squared is because of the, um, the substring method. Because for Java, um, the su dot substring method it will give us a linear time complexity. So in that case, the time complexity will be n, uh, n to the power of 3. So let's try to do this problem in code. So our first step will be to um, use a hash set, uh, convert this word dictionary to a hash set because this will give us a easier way to access um, elements to see if they exist in, in the list, right? So we're going to use a global variable, which is a type string. We're going to use, uh, we're going to call it dictionary. What we're going to do is we're going to assign dictionary is equal to a new hash set. I'm going to pass in word dictionary and then we also have a string what we're going to do is we're going to use a hash map to memoize which the key is string and the value in this case is going to be boolean okay basically what we're going to do is we're going to cache the result right so in this case hash map and then what we're going to do is we're going to return we're going to use a helper method which basically takes a string and we're going to recursively um, recursively splitting the, the, the string, right? Just like we mentioned here, we're going to split a string, which we have a left string. And the left substring, we're going to see if it's in the dictionary. And the right substring, we're going to see if it's a valid word break. So we're going to do this recursively. So we're going to have a private Boolean, which returns Boolean. And we're going to call a helper and it takes a string, okay? First of all, we want to make sure that because that when we're splitting, right, there could be a situation where the string is empty, just like this one. Then what we're going to do is we want to make sure that the string is, if it's null, we're going to return true, okay? Because we want to make sure that we are focusing on the right sub, uh, the left substring. In this case, we're focusing on the left substring to see if it's actually inside the dictionary. If it is, then we want to make sure this is also true, right? Otherwise, if this is true and this is not true, that will, make, that will not make sense. So in this case, we want to make sure this is true. Then we want to make sure that we also don't have the string computed in the, like we basically want to make sure that uh, we did compute this string in the cache. In this case, it contains this string. We want to make sure that if cache contains this key, we want to return this element, right? Inside the cache.get s, okay? Because we don't want to compute this thing another time. So what we're going to do then is we're going to iterate. So we're going to traverse starting from index, um, starting from index one. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to um, traverse and is equal to s dot length while i is less than equal to n because we want to include the last element when we're splitting. Okay. Because when we say um, substring, we want to pass in the start index the n index, including the last element, right? So in this case, we all we will also um, iterate the last element as well. So what we're going to do 
is we're going to, to get the substring. So the left substring is basically equal to s the substring. Okay, we pass the substring starts and i, right? So in this case, we the left is basically the left side of the current pointer, and the right substring, okay, is equal to s the substring i at all the way to the end, right? In this case, we're all, all, all the way to the last element in, this, in, the, in, in the string. So in this case, the current pointer all the way to the very, very right, or the last element, um, including the last element in the string. Then what we're going to do is we're going to see, just like what we talked about here, right? We want to see if the left substring is actually in the dictionary. So in this case, dictionary.contains, we're going to see if it contains the left substring. And... We want to make sure that if helper contains the right substring, if that's the case, then what we're going to do is we don't want to compute this again. Of course, we're going to return true, but we don't want to compute this again. So what we're going to do is we're going to use cache.put. We're going to put right, sorry, uh, we're going to put s as the current string, right? So, so this current string, the current this current string, we already computed it, so we don't want to compute this again. So this this s is going to be the key. The value is going to be true because we already checked that the current string is true. It is, it is a valid word break. Okay, so we can just return true, and we want to make sure that we save this result in the cache. Then what we're going to do is after we've done iterating, we know that this is going to be false because there um, it didn't really satisfy this condition. So what we're going to do is we're going to say cache.put s is going to be false. Okay, because we know that this is nothing really happens. I'm going to return false. Um, another thing we have to do is there could be a empty string in this case. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if s the length is equal to zero, then we can also return true. Okay, so now let's try to run the code and let's try to submit. So now you know how to solve this problem and. As you can see, um, the substring method takes a linear time complexity, so therefore our, our time complexity is not going to be bagel of n, n squared. Instead, of, instead we're, we're having a bagel of n to the power of 3 for time complexity. Okay, And um, basically, for space complexity, it's going to be bagel of n, where n is um, number of characters in the string. right? Um, yeah, basically here you can see we have cache, right? So you can see every time when we save an element, uh, computer result, we save the result onto the cache hash map, right? So therefore we have n elements in the cache. So there you have it, right? So basically I know it takes, it is a very hard problem um, to digest, but I believe that um, the more you do dynamic programming problems, the more you get good at them. And as long as you know how you can do them, like the, the, the core idea behind solve, solving this word break problem, you should be able to solve this problem easily. So there you have it, and thank you for watching.